today's video is on conceptual art and AI. In the 1990s, there were a lot of conceptual artists. They were called young British artists, YBAs. And the YBAs were people like Tracy Emin. Tracy Emin became a drawing director of a famous university. And she also uh, made a tent and someone else did a shark and then cut the shark up. And there was all sorts of interesting things going on. And people really couldn't understand it. They were calling it the emperor's new clothes. But I was in the midst of it. I went to a place called Sensational Ant Noises in 2000 and I saw firsthand how these things went. So I saw the entire nature of the, the, y, the YBAs, the conceptual arts from the 1990s. From about 1993 to about 2000, I was very into it and I saw a lot that was going on. And people really didn't understand. Some people loved it. I have friends and they were like, yeah, this is the best thing, man. This is the best thing. Yeah, we're on the edge. We're on the edge. And there were other people that just went, this is a load of crap. It really is. Emperor's new clothes. People paying loads of money to go and see a white canvas. People going to see a piece of chewing gum on the wall or blue tack on the wall. It was so bad that at one gallery, I think it was the National Gallery in London, a conceptual piece that involved maybe a light switch and a piece of blue tack or chewing gum, the cleaner cleaned it away. And there was another bit where there was rubbish all over the floor and again the cleaner cleaned it away. So the cleaner was unable to identify it was art. If you had a Raphael, Michelangelo, Picasso, Matisse, Cezanne, Monet, Manet on the wall, you'd be able to see that it was a great piece of art because humans have an ability to see something which is beautiful. Beauty is sort of innately recorded in us. If you look at the Fibonacci sequence, or you look at sacred geometry, you look at pi, 3.141592653588, you can understand that there are magical numbers which are put into nature. They, if you look at the solar systems, the solar systems work on these magic numbers and then the plants work on these magic numbers and our bodies work on these ma magic numbers. Our head goes into the body, I think, eight times. You know, your, the length from here to here is the size of your foot. Um, you know, if you expand your arms, the total distance is the height of your body. So there are mathematical equations which are being locked into nature. Nature works on mathematics, but perhaps not mathematics from this dimension, mathematics from another dimension which is expresses itself in this dimension through the local laws of physics. But anyway, that's a different thing. We're talking about conceptual art, so let's go back into conceptual art. Conceptual art, you look at it and you think that is absolute shit, that is terrible. The whole idea behind conceptual art was concept, it wasn't skill, it wasn't skill based art, it was concept art. A lot of the problems these days is people look at art and they go, oh my god, that's so good. If you look at a, p a picture in ant noises, they had sculptures which were so detailed, they looked lifelike. They freaked you out. Miniature little angels sitting, and they were beautiful, but there was something golem-like, you know, there was something a bit like awful about them. And you had to admit that this stuff was really, really, really good, skill-wise. But skill doesn't equate to art. Skill doesn't equate to concept. Just because you can paint something or sing something perfectly doesn't mean it's art because art is something which is very misunderstood. And today it's been thrown around. It's like my art, you know. Like I met someone the other day and she was drinking medicine and she, she was a French girl. And she was saying, yeah, yeah, I like to tag stuff, you know, because it's my art. And I said, so what do you tag? And she goes, well, I go to like these really sacred places, you know, like the Grand Canyon, or I go to waterfalls, or I go to ancient memorial sites, and then I tag. And I said, what do you mean by tag? And she goes, well, I put my initials on it. And I go, so you just graffiti the place with initials? And she goes, yeah, but you see, it's art. And for me, it was like narcissism, you know. Um, but... People, people have their, their ideas and their definitions of it. And, you know, I'd like to say, you know, I'm all hip and cool and everyone, you know, can think what they want and that's okay. But to be honest, I think, you know, you're, in English we say wankers, you know. If you don't understand what that word is, perhaps you can go and 
have a look. But to be honest, you're a tosser and not Pedro Wanker. If you're going to start graffiti in places with your tag because you think it's cool, in places which are you know two thousand years old, three, four, five thousand years old, you you understand nothing, nothing about art. What you are is an anti-artist. You're not even an anarchist, an anarchist, an ana anarchist, anarchist. That was it, isn't it? It's anarchist. You're not even an anarchist. Yeah. Going around, an anarchist is somebody who wants to self-rule, not destroy the rulership of other people, you know. If if you were an artist, then you ruled in your epoch, didn't you? You had something that was great, you had something that was admirable, and that passed through the generations. Yeah, you ruled, you ruled that, that mindset, you know, that was channeled through generations into generational. You ruled something, and to come across that thing and then destroy it for other people, you know, because you're an anarchist or anti-artist you know so an anarchist may be something that's good of course it's delicate you know but in its true sense you know it, it seems to be quite good an art in its true sense but a lot of people they are they are botched jobs as humans aren't they so the whole thing with conceptual art is that you don't need skill the concept is the most important thing I understand I have a concept about something and I need to express that concept okay but I don't need to have skill in order for me to be a real artist because the art lies in the concept and it's sort of true you can be misdirected when you when you think that the skill when the skill of an when the skill of an object is so good that you believe it's art, you, you do not understand art. With, my, with Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello, Leonardo da Vinci, which are the famous ones, and then you could go to Caravaggio, you could go to Lippi, Botticelli, you could go to those artists. They have tremendous skill because during the Renaissance, skill was something which was really, really important, which was really, really good. They were also talking about objective stuff as well, which I might want to add. Probably as you're getting up to something like the 1950s, once you're going towards like Picasso, Picasso was born in 1886, I think. Van Gogh and people like that, you're starting to get into subjectivity. Perhaps the last objective artist was perhaps Cezanne. And so AI, AI sort of does what the conceptual artists were talking about. And this is the really strange thing. Because with AI, anyone can have the skill. What's important is your ideas. What's important is your prompts. So when you have, I want this type of music, or I want this image, or I want this video, the computer does the skill for you. The computer does the skill for you. There were some artists that paid other artists to do their work because they lack skill. And this isn't a new thing. This isn't a new thing. Artists weren't individual people, they worked in groups or they worked in teams. When you had Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci, they worked in teams, they worked in a house, they worked in an atelier. They worked as, as under someone else, which is where they got their training. So if you look at Rubens, for instance, what Ruben, Rubens had an art factory. The paintings came in, he goes, yeah, I like it, like it, right. You do the background, you do the foreground, you do the hands, you do the face. You do this and then I'll touch it up and I'll sign my name. That's how it went. That's how the artists went. They were more directors. A director of a, um, a film, they've got a lighting director. They've got the actors. They've got the producer. They've got the technical. They've got all this stuff. The director can't do anything, but it's his name. He's in charge of everything. And that's how these houses in the Renaissance worked. It's just that one of those people became so famous, like Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, or Michelangelo, that they came out and they did their own thing, but they had people working for them. Michelangelo had loads of people working for him. And so what's the difference between you being the artist, the concept, the person invoking these ideas coming down and then employing or getting something else with technical ability that you don't have to exact your ideas. And so AI does exactly what it is that they were doing in the Renaissance. Now this is extremely good. And extremely bad it's very bad because you lose skill so you no long you become dependent on AI and this is the mass danger with AI this is where Satan 666 this is where the conspiracy theorists come in this is where you know the beast system comes in we give our reliance we give our ability we give our skill over to AI and we become reliant on it it does everything for us and makes us stupid you might have seen 
that those pe those those uh, African beautiful African women with the like things on their neck. What that was is that if you put enough rings on their neck, if you take the rings out of their neck, then the neck collapses. So what happens is, is that you, for, for the sake of beauty, you put these rings on and then you take one away when the woman disagrees with you and the neck collapses and she dies. So therefore you control the woman. Now I'm not sure if that's exactly true, but it's just a metaphor. I'm not, I'm not pro Barbie and anti men and like hating men, but, um, and I love women as well. So, you know, it's just a metaphor. So you guys just need to kind of like relax and don't get too upset or uppity. You know, you're not allowed to say uppity, are you? Yeah, so um, so anyway, so yeah, so that's where the conceptual art comes in. And so you, you, you have this two, these two things. If, if, if you give up skill, you become reliant on the AI. But for the person in, in their room, like for instance me, if I can get enough AI, then I can make films. I can do everything that I've wanted. Whatever's in my head, I can now do. And this is going to get further and further and further. Like, if you go to the metaverse and you go with these brain chips, you then think of something and it appears. So you become a god. You become someone that's developing your own universe. You become someone... Now, these are very, very metaphysical concepts because if you look at ancient uh, texts or shamanisms, it's very possible for adept people to create their own worlds in the other world so when they die they go there and what ai seems to be doing as a sort of a false god if you want to think of it like that is giving you the opportunity in this simulation which we're now in to create another simulation which is the metaverse in order to go there to create your own realities and you can speed time up or slow it down so one of our earth years could be a hundred in the metaverse you know which brings into this idea they wanted to die and they couldn't which is a biblical reference so if you could go to the metaverse and then you could have 300 years, you could build empires, you could build cities, you could build beautiful art, just with your imagination and AI sort of does it and you say, yeah, can you do this, do this, do this, do this. So what you're gonna become is a prompter. The most important thing is to be able to prompt the AI and to know how to prompt the AI. So as a final thing on this video that I want to say is, from the 90s, so Marcel Duchamp was the first person to give, you know, conceptual art. And by the way, he wasn't a fool, he was a master chess player. But he put a urinal in, called it a fountain. And, you know, for like the work and everyone hated him and some people loved him. And then it sort of like went on and you had, you know, people making furry cups, you know, and uh, other strange things. But really, and, and it did a lot of damage actually to the art establishment. Like, for instance, Camberwell College had a lot of plaster casts of ancient... Um, of ancient Donatello's and someone went in with a hammer and smashed them all up in order to make more room for like conceptual art spaces etc etc so we, 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 are, we are now at a point whereby you know it seems that conceptual art art's always supposed to be ahead of itself but it seems that conceptual art in the, in the 1990s or before the 1990s going back to Duchamp is actually talking about what's going on today. There's something called the ready-mades, by the way. Ready-mades is when you take objects that are already ready-made, so they're made already, ready-made, and you use ready-mades in order to do your art. So you borrow things from, from society, like, I don't know, a telephone or a box or a hat or a plug or whatever it is, and you put them together and you create something else, right? So, that, so whatever it is that you use, you, you change the meaning of that use for something else. It's a bit like technology, you know, if I've got a stone, it's a stone, but if I use it to kill something, it's now a, a missile, it's technology, you know? If I've got a bit of wood, it's a bit of wood. If I put a string on it, it's still a bit of wood with a string, but if I pull it back, it's now an arrow. So you can turn, if you get two things and you put them together, you can turn it into a tertiary thing. And the idea of ready-made is to be able to do something like that. And so AI is sort of the ready-made because it's just ready to make everything. So we could call it the everything made or every made or very made or something like that. Anyway, I hope you liked it. I hope you liked the video. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye.